Hello guys and welcome to a new Stone Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you the last of six battle group previews of the new divisions in the latest DLC, The Fate of Finland. In this one we're looking at Ruhma Rapana, which is a Finnish division that focuses on infantry, artillery and aircraft. It severely lacks in ground-based AT, which does make it pretty vulnerable to heavy armor, especially if your opponent sets up a good AA network, because you don't really have anything past pack 38s, and then you're just sort of reliant on the Panzer Shrex or the 122s in the artillery tab, which is not really too much compared to other divisions. So stay away from open ground and heavy tanks if you can avoid it. And there's two ways I think that you can build Rima Rapana, which is either balanced juggernaut style for team games, uh, which is good because your teammates can make up for your shortfalls in the heavy AT department whilst providing plenty of artillery and air support yourself, or the Vanguard deployment type. Uh, where you make use of your fantastic infantry uh, to really push an advantage in the early game. So let's jump in to the recon tab and see what we're working with. So first of all, I've got a card of the uh, BA-10Ms or the BAFC. Uh, this has the HE and machine guns, so they always say is fantastic for infantry support, and that remains the case here. And the high optics allows it to spot other things nearby. The great thing about these at the moment, though, and the reason they're so important is because of their rate of fire being 10 round per minute and the abundance of light vehicles in the game. So not only do these get a chance to provide fantastic infantry support now, they also are great for cleaning up light vehicles and so are extra important. The first Finnish squad we have here is the Raya Yakari, which is a 10-man squad, sort of a line infantry setup with the three submachine guns, six rifles and a machine gun, but they do have a Molotov for the close range engagements as well. So these are fantastic for just accompanying your other mainline infantry and providing uh, that very high optics whilst they do it. Reasonable price for what they offer actually. Then there's the cards of Sissy. We've got two of these, uh, two cards of these in phase A. These are seven-man squads with five rifles, a machine gun, and a sniper, and they also have smoke grenades. So really, really versatile squad for supporting infantry in the early game, but also just fantastic for taking out uh, support weapons at range. Their machine gun matches the range of their sniper, so it can help you kill off things like infantry guns very quickly and then if you come under a little bit too much fire they get pinned down use the smoke to get them into cover and then you're fine also this is you come with radios and they have the radar trait which means they don't suffer from extra suppression behind enemy lines yeah really really nice squad here to accompany your other infantry in the early game you can also bring them in phase b to get six on the card but not too much of a gain in terms of availability then I have another card of the Raya Yakari. Right, moving on to the other stuff in the recon tab, we have the motorcycle here. These are reasonable. I mean, th since they buffed the optics on motorcycles, I have seen more people use them, but still not a massive fan myself. Then we have the uh, Taka Ampuya, which are the two man sniper squads but which but they both have snipers which is really important because it basically makes their firepower against support weapons incredible in this case they're kind of outmatched i think by the cc so i haven't decided to bring them in this case but for the other finnish division the pansari uh, these are definitely worth it then we have the availability of kev os these are the estonian squads i believe you can actually get three cards of these if you wanted to, and they're reasonable mid-range and close-range engagement tools, but the fact they don't have any like close-range anti-infantry weapon in the form of like a Molotov or a HE grenade, uh, that kind of sucks. Uh, so it makes them less than ideal. Um, there's also the Sissy KEV available. 
which is similar setup in terms of the weapons. And I think these are also the Estonian version of the city. Uh, but these provide a radio. So if you want a large squad that can provide your radios on the front line for a long amount of time, these might be the way to go. And potentially you could replace the Raya Yakari in phase B with a card of these instead, if you prefer. Right, jumping into the infantry tab, a lot to see here. So we have the Yakari. Hopefully I'm not butchering these Finnish names too much anymore. Uh, I'm giving it my best shot. But either way, <laughs> the standard Yakari squads, which are nine man squads with three submachine guns and six SVTs. Great for that sort of like mid range, close range engagement. Plus they have a Molotov, um, which is what sort of tips them over the edge compared to like the squads like the Kevos. Um, you also get the Panzerfaust for dealing with armor at close range. So these are your standard sort of line infantry. Well, not line infantry. These are your standard sort of versatile infantry that you can get for the finish. The standard line infantry comes in the form of the Ratsuveki and also the Kevari. But the Ratsuveki, these guys have two submachine guns, nine rifles and a machine gun with 15% accuracy, which is kind of nice. So I've got these in the early game for the longer range engagements and I think they do really well in that role. 12 men, especially like when pushing across the open, uh, by, supported by support weapons, uh, these can do fantastically well. Shooting from heavy cover against infantry that's not in heavy cover, these will melt them uh, pretty good because of the, the amount of rifles they have and the accuracy on that machine gun. So yeah, these are, are nice uh, sort of just chunky line infantry that just don't go away. And then we have a card of the Suxi Pioneeri. These guys have three submachine guns and two flamethrowers and great for supporting your mainline infantry in the early game. Uh, they're especially good when accompanied by Yakari because the Yakari provide the Molotov and then the flamers can finish them off, um, especially in terms of suppression. So the Molotov will do that initial suppression and then the Double Flamer will tip them off or tip them over the edge to the point where they can be surrendered potentially. And I also have a card of the Ratsu Pioneeri, and these are 12 man squads once again. They have three submachine guns and nine rifles, but they also have a close range HE grenade, which is fantastic. So all of these infantry are there to sort of synergize with each other in the early game and help you maintain control of the heavy forests and so on. I also have a card of the leaders, the Retsuveki leaders. These have six men in the squad and smoke grenades, um, which is nice. Uh, reasonable firepower in the two submachine guns and rifles, but these can be used for radio as well. So that's all well and good. In phase B, I've got uh, more of the Yakari and more of the Retsuveki. And then in phase C, we have a card of the Kevari, uh, which are similar to the Ratsuvaki, except from they have three less men and they have the, the DP machine gun instead of the Lati Saloranta. So that's the difference there. But for cheap line infantry in phase C, these are pretty nice. And I have another card of the Pioneeri as well, although these aren't the Ratsu Pioneeri. These are just normal Pioneeri, uh, which have nine men, no submachine guns, which is kind of a big issue, uh, but they do have both AT and HE grenades. So it kind of makes up for it, but you definitely want to have like Yakari nearby to accompany the HE shell when you are attacking enemy infantry squads. Then I have a card of the Kavari leaders in phase C. You can get nine of these in a card, which is why I'm bringing them in in phase C. Uh, leaders elsewhere are kind of hard to find in this division, so um, you definitely need to fill out enough leaders in the infantry tab, in my opinion. Uh, but that's it for my choices. Let's have a look at what else is available. You can get loads of cards of Yakari and Kivari. Um, there's also these Rangestus. These guys are 20 point nine man squads, same setup as the Kivari, but they're disheartened. Uh, you do get more availability though, that's the main thing about these. Then there's the Lahitor Yunta. These 
are pretty nice in the early game for providing the Alati AT rifle plus the HG for infantry engagements. But in the case of Pruma Rapana, I have it set up so that I've got the Lati in the anti-tank tab and then I'm focusing more specialized infantry in the infantry tab. And then there's just the other choice of leaders. So Pioneer and there's also a Sissi leader as well, which comes with uh, six men, but you only get one in phase A at two star veterancy. So unfortunately not worth it. The tank tab is pretty incredible. You have one card of T26Bs to bring in <laughs> and you can either bring them in at one star veterancy or two star veterancy. I definitely recommend bringing them at least um, as they will give you a little bit of armor to support your infantry in the early game alongside the BA uh, 10 M's. By right, jumping into the support tab, we have infantry guns, the 76 mil assault guns. These are just useful for pinning infantry at range. Same old stuff as usual. And you can bring them with the Ford AA. And now the nice thing about the Finnish units is they can bring in these Ford AAs, which are reasonably quick trucks. They're not as fast as something like an Opal Blitz, but that's okay. And we have the Ford AA supply trucks and the rest of Eki uh, Commander as well. That's in phase A. Um, this is a little bit of a shame that they're only three man. Like this is going to die pretty quickly if they ever get targeted. So you've got to try and keep these safe if you can. Use their smokes to make that happen. Other choices in the support tab, which is pretty lackluster. Uh, we've got the two inch mortars. And there's also Maxim squads. And is that a different type of Maxim? Oh no, the only difference is that they're disheartened. Okay. So yeah, you can get disheartened ones or you can get normal ones. And the disheartened ones, you do actually get more availability in phase A. So maybe a card of these might be a good idea. But yeah, I'm not convinced that Maxims are that good. Anyway, uh, that's more or less all of the choices. This is the best command vehicle you can get and it comes in phase C. <laughs> all right, let's jump over to the anti-tank tab. Now this tank, anti-tank tab, I think is pretty important to get right because of your severe lack of ground AT otherwise. They've got the Lati in the early game for dealing with enemy uh, light armor. And you do get six on a card at 15 points apiece. So that's pretty good for uh, supporting your already cheap infantry in the early game. I've got the card of 45 more AT guns in the early game as well. And I've also got a card of the Tankin Toyunta. Now these are the 10 man squads with exceptional stealth and a Panzerstreck, which is really really nice so these are what you're going to have to use to kill off like heavy armor on the ground for the most part you also can get access to some two star pack 38s which is really nice uh, so make good use of these in the early game because they have that extra uh, veterancy they come in at more or less 62 percent accuracy which is pretty damn legit so unload these early and break down the enemy transports from range I've also got another card of Tankin Toyunta in Phase B, and this is what I was talking about when building this properly. I think it's very, very important to make sure you have enough Panzerstrex in this division to maintain hold of like your towns and also just like generally close range engagement areas. Otherwise, heavy tanks will just run you down. So have Panzerstrex available. There is also the Pansari Kalhu squads. These are the two-man Panzerstreich squads. Uh, there is a different gun here as well. This is the 75mm uh, gun, the Pac 9738, uh, which has heat shells. And I'm not sure how effective these heat shells would ever be, just because the accuracy is so damn low. But the fact they have like 90 millimeters of penetration as heat shells is not too bad. If they were like point blank, they might actually hit something. <laughs> but otherwise, you know, probably give these a miss. Just try and focus on getting your Panzerstrecks into decent positions. All right, jumping over to the anti-air tab. The anti-air tab is actually pretty decent because you have access to these Vekotins or Vekotins or whatever they are. Um, these are double 20 mil ground AA. So they have a similar power to the Russian Zis-12 in terms of what they can shoot out the sky. 
And if you have an abundance of these, they can just rip aircraft up. It's pretty crazy. Also for 60 points, you could potentially use these as sort of ground support weapons in the early game as well, uh, because they have the AP shells, uh, which just delete infantry or delete um, light armor very, very easily. And also the HE shells will delete infantry. So these can be pretty scary if they're placed in the right place. But for the early game, if you're not bringing in any fighters, you might just want to use these as solely AA. In phase B, I've got a card of the Bofors. Bofors are fantastic. They always have been in Steel Division 2. And that's no change here. So bringing those in. Then we have the second card of these in phase C. And you can get 12 on a card, which is pretty nuts. And this is where you could probably start to use them more liberally as support weapons. As opposed to solely AA. Then there's the Ford AAs. This one has the Maxim 4M. And then you've got the Ford AA with the 20mm on it, which looks interesting. I reckon if you had quite a lot of these, then they would be really effective. But for 15 more points, you can get the double 20mm. So I think these are just way better uh, for the early game than the trucks. Okay, let's jump over to the artillery tab. So the artillery tab's quite a nice one. You got like a lot you can bring in. Uh, it's not necessarily quality artillery, but there's a lot of it. So you can kind of saturate your enemy quite well. In this case, I've got a card of the 84 K-18s in phase A. These do have some AP shells with decent accuracy, actually. So you could use these more as uh, infantry guns as opposed to artillery. But uh, these are cheap for what they offer. And they do have smoke as well, which is nice for the early game. I've also got a card of the LEFH 105s. The reason I've got these in phase A is to make use of the radios that I have on the sissy squads and also on my leader squads. So corrected shot is important and in the early game can be really, really effective for winning infantry engagements because your artillery can aim quickly and uh, get those kills in. And well, more, more like pinning the enemy down than you surrender them. But either way, uh, really useful in the early game if you have corrected shot. Without corrected shot, the LFH 105 is pretty damn awful, so bear that in mind. Then I have the uh, Gauntlet Mark II, which comes in with 152mm off map. This off map is pretty concentrated. You get 40 shells per off map strike, uh, which is a lot in uh, the area that you're given. Uh, the other nice thing about the gauntlet is it's actually quite quick. It's 360 km per hour speed. So compared to other off-map aircraft like the Storch, it's really fast. So it doesn't get shot down as easily by enemy fighters. It can generally get out of there uh, before that happens. It's still just as weak to enemy anti-air though, so bear that in mind. I also have a card of the 122s in Phase A. Now I have heard confirmed from the developers that they are changing this back to heat, so bear that in mind. Uh, these will become much more relevant again, but the 160 millimeters of penetration currently is uh, useful for when enemy heavy armor gets closer, but when they get heat back, they'll be able to penetrate Panthers and stuff from range again, which will be really, really nice. So yeah, these are mainly here as AT as opposed to artillery. Um, the other thing to note about the 84 K-18s in Phase A, the reason I'm bringing them in Phase A is because that's the only re only time you can bring them, and they're affordable artillery, so kind of just taking up that slot there. I've also got more of these 122s in Phase B, again, more for just AT purposes, but if you needed more artillery or wanted to start counter-battering, uh, then these you, you could probably do that with these as well. And in phase C, you have access to a card of the 155s. Uh, these are pretty awesome, the Schneider 155mm. Um, with corrected shot, they can be super effective. So, yeah, something to definitely make use of in the late game. Other choices in the artillery tab, you've got the artillerists, or in this case, the uh, Tulan Yota, Yotayaya. Um, these guys... Yeah, two-man radio squads, basically, for if you need extra radios. Uh, but there are the 
10 man Pata Comrati. I don't know if that's what that stands for. Probably stands for something else. But you guys can correct me in the comments, I'm sure. It's 10 uh, man leader squads, same old as we've seen, similar to Barry Fiora and all that good stuff. So, yeah, there if you need extra leaders in the artillery tab, but the availability isn't fantastic on them. You can get two cards of 81mm mortars, and there's also a card of 120mm mortars available as well, if you prefer to have those, as well as a second card of the LAFH 105. Alright, let's jump into the air tab. Now, the air tab in this division is really cool. It has a lot of interesting aircraft, but it's a shame that not that many of them are terribly useful. So, first of all, I've got the MS 406C1. This is a recon aircraft, so great for just sending out at the start of the game. It does also have reasonable armament as well in the form of a 20mm and two 30 cals. So it might be able to shoot down enemy fighters if it can get on their tail, but will struggle pretty hard against anything heavier than a fighter. Uh, either way, it can defend itself and will provide you with that recon in the early game. Then I have the I-153 here. These are really cool aircraft, uh, but these have eight... AT rockets on them and these are great for taking out heavy armor in the early game and from what I've seen they're actually pretty damn accurate as well uh, so they can take out heavy tanks quite effectively and since they're cheap and available in phase A there's a lot of opportunity to destroy any heavy tanks you come up against before the enemy has a chance to build up a lot of AA but as soon as they do, these will get shot down relatively quickly, so bear that in mind. Next up, we have the MS-406. This is a fighter with a 20mm plus four 30 cals, so a little bit extra firepower that again makes it good for taking on enemy fighters, but not so great at taking down enemy bombers and so on. Uh, for that role, you're probably just reliant mainly on your anti-air but yeah, these will help save your own aircraft against enemy fighters by dueling with them, basically. They do have the very good agility and the 505 km per hour speed. I couldn't say exactly how effective these are because I haven't had much chance to test them. But either way, I thought two in phase A with one star veterancy can't go wrong. Then in phase A, I also have the Blenheims. These come with two 250 kilogram bombs, which is actually a really nice payload because not only do they pin down infantry very quickly, they can easily destroy support weapons. So that's something to consider at least. 395 kilometer per hour speed, decent speed as well. And they've got a, re a like a reasonable resilience to go with that. And for 95 points apiece, well, yeah. Another nice addition to the air tab. In phase B, I've got a card of the Ju-88 with the 28 50 kilogram bombs. So these are the carpet bombers, whereas the Blenheims are more of like the precision bombers. So these can help just pin down a forest area or maybe some heavy tanks if you're struggling to deal with them. And then you can find ways of dealing with those targets afterwards. These won't actually kill any targets. They're more just there for suppression. Then you have cards of the P231 with the AT rockets. These have 10 rockets on their wings and they're 440 km per hour speed. So actually quite damn reliable for taking out enemy armor. So... Make good use of these, 140 points. I think all of the AT planes are necessary to bring in the air tab, just because of your lack of ground AT. Then I have another card of the Blenheims in phase C. We get eight of these with the 250 kilogram bombs again, and another card of the PE2s in phase C as well. You get three of them on a card in phase C, which is quite nice. Other aircraft in the air tab include the DO-17, which is only 35 points apiece which is not too bad for a recon aircraft, actually, especially considering they have medium resilience. Then there's the I-153 fighter variant, but unfortunately these machine guns in the nose 
haven't performed too well from what I've seen. So I've kind of left them out for now. They're also not too good at strafing, unfortunately. Uh, but 40 points apiece, they are very, very cheap fighters for sure. And they have very good agility. You can even push that to excellent agility if you were to bring them in at two star veterancy. But you'd only get one in phase A if you did that. And there's the VLD XXI4. This has the four 30 cows, yeah, in the wings, uh, with exceptional agility at two star veterancy. It also has excellent agility at one star veterancy, but this severe lack of firepower is, yeah, a little bit of an issue. But yeah, I, I, I realize that that is a 21, I guess, uh, on the nu Roman numerals there. All right, next up, the MS-410. So this is the same setup as the MS-406, but it's slower, basically. Um, if I put this to no veterancy, you can see that they share the same agility. So it's very, very similar. Uh, the MS-410 also uses a different 20 mil. It has the Hispano as opposed to the MG-15220. So there, that's the, the main difference there. Then we have the Hawk available. The Hawk has 250 cows and 430 cows. Does have exceptional agility straight off the bat. And I think once these get fixed, they're actually going to be pretty useful for taking out enemy fighters and potentially even shooting down enemy bombers and stuff as well because they are just the right speed to stick on the back of a bomber for a reasonable amount of time. And with the extra veterancy that they have, like decent accuracy on their guns and the 50 cows that do a reasonable amount of damage over time. And there is also access to four cards of the JU-88A4s. And these have 500 kilogram bombs. So if you want a bit more bang for your buck, this is where you want to go. But the issue with 500 kilogram bombs is they, they basically do the same thing as two 250 kilogram bombs would. Just a bit overkill. The biggest thing with a 500 kilogram bomb is you'll pin a large area, which sometimes isn't a good thing, especially if you're wanting precision strikes. Then there's uh, two of the, another new aircraft here, the VL Mirski, uh, which comes with the equivalent of three, uh, 450 cows. They have a decent amount of firepower, but their lack of agility and speed makes these less than desirable compared to other aircraft available in this tab. Finally, there's the bombing variant with the two 100 kilogram bombs. The availability makes these less than ideal. And also again, the lack of agility and speed. Obviously, once you drop the bombs, these speed up and that's okay, but they're still gonna be outmatched by some of the other options that you have in this air tab. So there we go. That is Ruhma Ruhma Rapana, which is a very, very nice division full of loads of new toys to play with, especially in the air tab. And I had a lot of fun messing around with a lot of the new aircraft, but it's a shame that so many of them underperform quite a bit because it would have been nice to have seen the uh, biplanes and stuff be a little bit more relevant, especially in terms of like a strafing role or something like that. But there was loads to go through here, and hopefully I didn't butcher the pronunciations too much. Hopefully you've got an idea of how to play this balanced. More just comes down to like the solid infantry that you have and, and playing around that with the support of the artillery and air. But that's it. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.